Wakizashi's Tea House. Konnichiwa Minasan, this is Grey from Wakizashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? Are you good? I'm Genki, a little bit cold. We had some snow last night. And last night I went to see this, Matrix Resurrections, which opened in Japan Friday, 17th of December. Okay, first of all, I want to give a bit of background and then I'm going to give a spoiler-free review. And after that, I'll go into a few spoilers later on in the video. So, I'm a huge fan, like most people, I guess, of the original Matrix. I enjoyed the two sequels. They're not, not as good, of course, but there are good things in them, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but the first Matrix, it's one of those movies where I think a lot of people have experienced this. They went to see it, like, multiple times in the cinema. For me, that's the first time that's happened with a movie. I was over in Sydney, in Australia. I was doing a year's working holiday there, and it came out while I was there. And I would go every week on a, a cheap Tuesday and watch it. I watched it about maybe, I think, seven times. I know, right? Am I crazy? Well, I love this movie. So I went into the new movie, Resurrections, with high hopes. You know, I've heard all the rumours it's going to be rubbish, it's going to be just a rip-off, or, you know, it's a money a way of getting, you know, making more money, but I, I was optimistic. Naive, right? I'm a fool, I know. But, you know, I really went in hoping for the best. So, what's it like? Okay. Long story short, it's okay. It's not terrible, but it's not terrific. I left this, the cinema feeling like I was disappointed. I went to see it with a friend and we were both talk, talking about it and he said, like, it's not, it wasn't terrible. You know, it was okay. So that's, that's the kind of feeling I got from it. So let's go into some of the positives. Okay, first of all, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss. It's so good to see them again on the screen together. They have a really good kind of rapport, a good um, chemistry, good combination between them. And they're both great in the parts. You know, they still look really good for however old they are. Um, yeah, it was so nice seeing them together. Out of the new characters, my favourite was the blue-haired, double-gunned badass, Bugs, she's called. Um, this was Jessica Henwick, who I hadn't realised she played Colleen Wing in Iron Fist and The Defenders. Not great series, but yeah, she's unrecognisable in this. Blue hair, cool glasses. I've heard that she acts as our eyes, like the audience's eyes. She's taking us through the film, you know, she's kind of guiding us. She's not completely overpowered. She's not a Mary Sue. She's a really nice character, sweet character. She has a good relationship, a good rapport with the other, you know, the other main members, especially with Neo. So yeah, out of the new characters, she was my favorite. The new version of Morpheus is played by Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. I hope I got that right. Um, he's, he's fine as an actor. He's fine in the part, but being honest, it it just didn't feel like Morpheus. It kind of maybe it was the way he was written, but he was playing it a little bit tongue in cheek. You know, he, there were nods to the original. I mean, who can who can surpass Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus? He is Morpheus, and always will be. Yeah, but as I say, he's 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 okay in the role. It just something about it for me fell off. Maybe it was the way he was playing it, or it was the way he was written. I'm not sure. Yeah, he fights well though. He's a badass great suit as well in that photo. And the third main new character in the movie is Neil Patrick Harris who plays Doogie Howser MD. No wait a minute that's that's a different program isn't it? a different show. He actually plays Neo's therapist which if you've seen the trailer the first trailer you'll, you'll have seen a little bit of that. Um, he's okay again uh, without going into spoilers I I don't think he worked very well in the role he was meant to be playing. He started off okay, but no, not not for me, sorry. He, he just didn't work in his role. As I say, I'll go into more detail later on when I go into spoilers, but yeah. It was nice to see him in the movie. It was a bit surprising, you know. I'm sure people were surprised like me when we saw the trailers, like, wait a minute, Doogie Howser's in The Matrix. What's going on? Can I just pause a moment to say, how dope are these two promotional posters for the Japanese release? Don't you just want these sunglasses? Red and blue pill sunglasses. They are so cool. How great does like Keanu and Carrie Anne, how great do they look there? <sighs> I'm a sucker for a great image. So 
as I say, I'm trying to still focus on the positives. Um, action scenes, when they come, when they come, are good. They're not genre defining. They're not like mind blowing. You don't see anything brand new like you saw in the original Matrix. You know, when you first saw Bullet Time, when you first saw Trinity take that jump in the hotel, and the camera pans around and she kicks the policeman. Ah, oh, man, that that really blew my mind the first time I saw it. So you know, I was hoping for a kind of new. We'd see something new like that, new technology, but we don't. As Matrix action scenes, they are what you'd expect. They're good, but they didn't blow my mind, and. I thought they were too few and with long gaps between them. Hmm. Going to the negatives. There's a lot of talking in this movie. There's a lot of sitting down and talking. There's a lot of sitting in coffee shop talking, sitting in a therapist's office and talking. Yeah, a lot of talking, a lot of explaining. Too much. This movie's two and a half hours long, just under, yeah? And I think they could have cut quite a lot out and it would have it wouldn't have changed anything. It would have made it probably a faster more exciting movie but if you don't mind long talks talking scenes and long explanations then enjoy it as i say i i love seeing keanu and carrie Anne, so i didn't mind that and they hold this movie you know they they make the movie simple as that if they'd got different actors to play the parts it, i think it wouldn't it wouldn't be half the movie it is and as i say remember it is to me it's an average movie it's a disappointment um the cinematography is great. It looks beautiful. The as I say, the Matrix. It looks great. You know, the cities are well shot. There's some lovely scenes in there. I heard it was shot partly in San Francisco, partly in Berlin. I'm not sure where else. The scenes in the real world. You you do go back to the real world. You see, you know, the kind of underground, in the dark sewers. We we see the the machines. We see the pods. Yeah. They do go back to that, and it's it's dark and moody, and looks like the the first three movies. Yeah, I'm, I say I'm 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 kind of reaching here. I'm looking for positives, but as I mentioned in my short video, which I posted last night, right after seeing it, I think the movie thinks it's more clever than it is. Do you know what I mean? I was hoping it's going to be smarter. Now, one of the reasons behind that is one of the writers. I'm not sure if you know, is David Mitchell who's probably most famous for Cloud Atlas, the book and the movie. Now the Wachowskis had a part in the directing Cloud Atlas. So I think they must have got a relationship from that. So yeah, he was coming into it. He's a very smart writer, very clever. He writes great stories. I recommend any of his books. He's a very meta writer, if you know what I mean. Very self-aware. Um, so the movie is like that. If you've seen the trailers, you'll probably gather that it's, it's very meta, very self-aware. There's a lot of references to the first three movies, not just the first movie. If you've seen the trailer, you've seen scenes which are being like projected in this movie from the, the earlier movies. That's, that's quite clever how they do that, but again, I, some of the explanations, like, you're kind of like, mm, what, what does that mean exactly? So yeah, overall, to sum up, disappointing. As a huge Matrix fan, and I, I, I went in positive, you know, I really wanted to like it. I want to love it. Um, I'm not gonna go and see it again at the cinema. For me, that's the the ultimate test. You know, I saw the first one like seven or eight times, so I'll probably watch it again when it comes on streaming, rent it out. I don't know, but yeah, you know, it it did make me want to rush out and see it again. So. Sorry about that, guys. You know, I, I, want, I wish I could tell you it's amazing. I, I wanted to say that maybe you'll think it is. Maybe you'll love it. You know, if you like long talking scenes and, you know, <laughs> lots of explanation. If you don't mind just a few action scenes. Yeah, maybe you'll love it. So, okay, that's the end of my spoiler-free review. I'm going to go into a few more spoilers from now on. So, if you don't want to know, please stop watching here. Thank you for watching and uh, thank you for leaving a comment if you do. This is Grey from Makisashi's Tea House, freezing cold, a cold snowy morning, and um, saying see you later. I hope to see you in the future video. So as I say, if you want to know the spoilers, keep watching. Hiya, are you still here? Are you sure? You want to hear some spoilers? Okay, I'm going to give um, a basic summary of the parts of the film that I remember. Okay, so let's have a look at them. Here we go. Looking great in this poster. 
So the movie opens like the first movie, the original Matrix. You know, there's a there's a call going through, and we hear we overhear a conversation, and they do a recreation of the opening scene with Trinity in the original Matrix. Now, at first, I thought it was Carrie Ann Moss, and they they'd done like her, they de-aged her, they'd made her look younger, but it's a different actress who looks like Trinity. So there's a recreation of that scene, but it's it's different the way it's been shot. The angles are different, and there's someone watching it. So I'm like observing this and they're talking about it. We hear a conversation between the new character Bugs, the blue haired Jessica Henwick and her like operator. So they're talking and it's strange how they, they explain it as, as a, a modal. I'm not even sure what that means, M-O-D-A-L, a modal. So maybe some kind of glitch and she's tracking it and she gets spotted and there's a big fight with agents and we see Again, spoilers, yeah? We see Morpheus, the new Morpheus, as an agent. He's dressed as an agent and he's fighting uh, Bugs, the new character. Therefore, there's a big gunfight. Uh, she gets away. And then Morpheus, new Morpheus, and Bugs, they meet. They go through a doorway. They meet in a room. It looks familiar. And you're like, I've seen this room before. It turns out it's Thomas Anderson, you know, Neo, before he's unplugged. His room from the very first movie where he's hacking. So nice little uh, member berries there, nostalgia scene. And they're talking and it's like we hear how Bugs and New Morpheus, how they found out about the Matrix, how they found out, you know, something was wrong with the real world and how they got out. So she, they kind of leave together and we get New Morpheus in the real world with Bugs. Then we have Neo, Thomas Anderson. He's not Neo, yeah? He's got no memory of the first three movies. He's a game designer working for a huge game company. Like in the first movie, he was a software, he was working for a software company, wasn't he? Just like a faceless corporate corporate guy working in a, an office. In this one, he, he's a famous game designer who made the Matrix trilogy, three games which were hugely successful. So we got the meta references there and he made the characters based on himself and based on Carrie Ann Moss, Trinity, who's got a different name in this movie. So he he's seen like flashes of scenes from the games, you know, in his dreams. He's wondering like, is it real? He's starting to see things happen in the, what to him is the, the, you know, the real world, it's the Matrix. We see him going to see his therapist, Dougie Hauser, MD, talking about the dreams and the game, kind of getting mixed up. He's not sure if he's going crazy, like me, or not. We see him taking medication, which are blue pills from the first movie. You know, he, he's on a regular medication. He's taking that daily, I guess, to keep him unaware, you know, keep him plugged into the Matrix. Then we see Thomas Anderson in a coffee shop having a coffee and we see Trinity walk in or the character who we know is Trinity but it's not Trinity in the movie and Neo is he's like wow you know look at her he's, he's with a he's with a friend from work and he's the friend says hey mate I'll introduce you so he goes over and gets Trinity and he gets them to meet and you've seen this in the trailer they shake hands there's that great scene where she asks, like, have we met? Have we met before? And Neo's not sure. So then we find out she's got husband and kids. Yeah, they walk into the coffee shop and then they, they leave and walk out. But she turns back and she looks at him. You know, you can see she's thinking. Mm. Okay, so what's next? Remember, I'm kind of hazy about this. Um, okay, I think what happens next is we see Thomas Anderson, Neo, at work. And he, he goes to the restroom. And in the restroom... Out of one of the cubicles walks New Morpheus, and Neo's like, you know, freaking out. What? Why? You know, this is a joke, isn't it? You're you're from the game, and New Morpheus, playing it a little bit tongue in cheek, basically gets Neo to, you know, well, he tries to get him to come with him, but he won't. Neo's like, no way, man, and he he leaves. He's running out, and then there's a there's a big action scene in the office where it gets raided by by police, and then we see our first glimpse of New New Agent Smith. Oh, I so wish that it was Hugo Weaving, but it isn't. The new guy's okay in the part, and he's he's actually Neo's either boss or partner, business partner, and 
we see like this slow scene of him slowly reaching for a gun on the floor, you know, and he's, he's kind of looking at the gun and he's smiling and then he, he shouts the famous line, of course, from the first movie, Mr. Anderson, and there's a big action scene. Okay, sorry, I'm going into too much detail. It's going to end up being too long, so I'm going to shorten things and just focus on a few things. Again, spoilers, yeah, so... One thing that's new in this movie is what's called a swarm. A swarm. Now, if you remember from the first three movies, the agent could only like possess one, one person at a time. In the, in the new movie, you see they can do multiple people, which is the swarm thing. You see their eyes change. They go black, and you see like the Matrix uh, uh, letters you know, flying down their eyes. So there are more and more people attacking in this movie, which it, it makes some good scenes. There's like a great scene near the end where it's almost like a, a walking dead, like a zombie attack, you know, in the city, like crowds of people like trying to stop the main characters. So things that I thought were good, it's the way that Neo doesn't want to be, doesn't want to take the red pill. You know, he's like, no way, this is, I'm, I'm going insane. It's not real. You know, he's, he's denying it for the longest time, but he does in the end. And like the first movie, you see him, you go into the, the actual the real world you see him get out of his pod and he gets rescued um there's a nice fight scene like the first movie not as good as the first movie where he fights morpheus morpheus is trying to get neo to you know release his 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 real powers but neo's holding back again like the first movie there's a great scene which i wanted to cheer cheer to because you see a, like a, a scene set in japan there's a scene on a shinkansen a bullet train they go through one of these doors and they're they're on a train and you see like people on the sat on the train they've got they've got like masks on so i'm not sure that was shot post the start of the pandemic or not but it's a very japanese thing anyway to wear a mask but they're not like the regular surgical masks they've got like colored masks black masks so yeah maybe that was shot recently the a good scene where they get attacked on the train and it kind of goes from through the the doorway through the portal comes onto the train you see a big explosion people are getting attacked my the my friend who was watching it with he said that reminded him of train to busan that scene where the you know the the swarm possesses all the passengers and they all, they all start attacking neo and bugs the main characters morpheus some cool scenes there someone gets like like thrown off the train it looks it looks really good yeah some of the cgi is a bit a bit iffy but anyway so i enjoyed the train scene you see a shot of mount fuji as well in the background it's too big but it, it looks cool what else so keeping up with the spoilers neo wants to get trinity out of the pod he sees her in the real world when he's released he you know it's coincidence or whatever but he sees trinity in a different part so that's basically the the main theme of the movie is to get her out but she's resistant she doesn't want to so they they alternate between going into the matrix trying to talk trinity into you know joining him and then the real world where they're trying to get her without freaking her out if they if they pull her out too soon when she's not ready they make that very clear she's got to be ready for it you know she's got to have agency it's her it has to be her choice if they pull her out too soon, she'll go crazy, you know, she'll lose it. So they eventually, they get her out. And from there on, it does get more action in the movie. You know, as I say, they're, they're trying to get out of the city. They're being attacked by swarms of agent-possessed, matrix-possessed people. Crazy scenes where you see people, like, diving out of windows from you know, tower blocks or office blocks, skyscrapers, diving down, trying to like stop the main characters from escaping. They call them like human bombs. It's really, it's weird. And I'm not going to go into the very end, but one more spoiler is there's a return of a character from the second movie, Reloaded. Do you remember the Merovingian? The French speaking character who was, he was pretty cool, wasn't he? He's terrible. He's terrible in this. It's uh, the, the the way they wrote him. He looks like a, a homeless bum, and he's just talking nonsense. He's got no no charisma. No, there's no menace. There's a, a fight scene with him and like people with him who are called what was it? They're called something like rejects or the yeah that was all right. 
not so exciting. They they reference the subway fight scene between Agent Smith and Neo from the first movie. There's kind of a recreation of that where again Neo's holding back, he can't release his his true powers. The ending's okay. It's interesting. It leaves things open for a future. You know, there, there might be another movie I don't know, but yeah, I like the ending. But okay, so I, I say I'm I'm a bit hazy because a lot of things happened in the movie were nothing really stayed in my mind apart from what I've talked about. So yeah, let me know what you think when you see it. You know, I really hope you enjoy it. I was hoping for more, but hey. Just my opinion, just one guy. So again, thanks for watching this far. Sorry for rambling, sorry for losing the plot and hope to see you in a future video. This is Gray from Wacky's Ashes Tea House signing off. Matane. Wacky's Ashes Tea House, please subscribe. <laughs>